Okay. All right. I'm just looking at this. Babatunde Balamosi joins us this morning. He's a member of the People's Democratic Party. Also comments on public affairs matters. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much, Chamberlain. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, interesting times, really, uh, as the year winds down, because we do know lots of political activity going on. And 2014, of course, promises to be really exciting, uh, depending on what side of the divide people are on. <laughs> but the thing is, I mean, we've seen so much gravitation uh, from one party to the other, which people have come to accept that that just happens on a regular basis here. But from what you've seen, do we have any major cause to say, look, we really need to be concerned here. Mr. Marco, just a uh, moment ago, talked about politicians who come up with these thugs for violence. Some will imagine, look, we hope we don't see that kind of scenario in 2014. But looking ahead, what do you see politically? Well, one thing I'm glad for is uh, in 2013, we've seen... Uh, an alignment of forces that had hitherto been irreconcilably opposed to one another. Okay? Uh, chiefly in the main opposition party. People who the main opposition party had described as, you know, thoroughbred rogues and uh, irredeemably corrupt have uh, somehow found their way to the same opposition party in 2013 and have suddenly become the best things since sliced bread. Now, that's something for Nigerians to ponder and but think about as we move into 2014 Okay. in terms of the credibility of the political parties that we have in Nigeria. And I am a member of PDP. Uh, I say that bearing that in mind, that the credibility of political parties in Nigeria is, is something that we need to really scrutinize. But you know, and that includes my own party, PDP. Okay, speaking about your own party, we were uh, also this morning yes. looking at uh, the power sector. Yes. You know, the minister said, look, why don't you guys look at some of the efforts we've made? And some people say, oh, yeah, granted, they've done it. They put in quite a number, quite some efforts. But when politicians come into position, or before they come into position, they come up with manifestos, they tell you this is what they intend to do. Is there anything wrong in saying, well, this is what you said you were going to do, but you've not been able to do it, especially when they don't come to admit that, okay, I haven't done this, but the reasons could be whatever. Well, uh, first of all, because I'm a victim of the inefficiencies of the power sector, I'll be the first to put up my hands and say that we haven't quite achieved what we set out to achieve in the power sector in 2013. The promises were made, and those promises were made based on uh, information that was supplied by professionals in the industry, mainly, well, those who we now know to be PHCN workers, okay? The same PHCN workers who have recently been paid off by uh, PHCN before the successor companies uh, uh, took over, okay? They supplied information to the authorities, which made the authorities believe that certain things could be achieved. Now, the same people who supply the information went about sabotaging. Really? Yes, sabotaging oh. the efforts of the authorities to try and bring some sanity into the system. I'm not going to go into the details now, but suffice it to say that in my area, all right, uh, of Ibejuleki, starting from the Awea axis right up all the way to the free trade zone and beyond, there has not been a second of power supply in the last seven months. Seven months. Seven months. And that's this is in the Lagos Free Trade Zone area. That's, and that's because of people working in PHCN? That's because of people working in the PHCN who, first of all, when they, advise, when they set up the uh, substation in Aja, set it up with not enough capacity to take care of the entire area. And as the area grew, they did not pass the advice on to the authorities that, look, we need to upgrade or we need to open up more substations in the area. Okay? And as the area... The growth of the area is uh -huh. actually quite obvious, quite regulated. All right? You see new estates 
starting up. You know straight away when you see a fence going around a large tranche of land and you see tractors moving in and, you know, creating it, you know that there's something going on here. There's going to be some demand for power here. Now, the reason I ask that, I mean, I'm just trying to exclude vandalism, at least in your vandalism own Vandalism is involved too. It is involved too. In your own, in the case of your own area? Not just in my area, everywhere in Nigeria. And the vandalism I'm can't looking. take place without the participation, without the active connivance of PHCN staff who have to actually give them outage, as it were, to take power off the line so that they're not live anymore. And then they can go on and, you know, strip uh, the cables down, take off uh, we're looking at the specific, components of the transformers uh, We're looking so at on. specific cases. I mean, yes. in your own case, you've talked about you know, not enough supply to a particular area. No, 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 they I haven't say not enough supply. They no supply whatsoever. None. They haven't, <laughs> they haven't None. upgraded uh, your substations okay. to be able to cater for everybody around your area. That, yes. I'm just saying that that is definitely not vandalism. No, no, no it's actually it. vandalism of a sort. Okay. That's administrative vandalism. That's, yeah. a, that's a new one, <laughs> I, 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 I think. You know, but looking at this power sector, are you hopeful? I am, if the regulator can get his act together. That's NERC? Yes, and I'm talking about the current regulator. Uh, I think his name is Dr. Sam Amadi. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think he's dropped the ball. How? And I think he's, he needs to be pulled up on that. The reason the privatization road was taken was because... NEPA, as it then was, was profiting without providing a service. They would simply dream up a bill and bring it to you and you had to pay. Otherwise, the few hours that you enjoyed, maybe four or five hours a day, you would be denied even that. But that, that hasn't completely stopped yet. No, it hasn't. That's my point. Oh. That's what I'm driving at. With the advent of the NERC, that ought to have stopped by now. And indeed, it did stop under the previous... Uh, 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 regulator, um, I forget his name now. I remember the man that was removed during the Yahadua period, during the Yahadua administration. He actually managed to minimize it, and in some cases, he brought it to a total stop. And it was during this time that I was uh, that, that, that we got the meter at our estate. And uh, even though we had a meter, these guys refused to read it. Mm. They carried on giving us estimated bills that were far in excess of what we were consuming. And that went on for about 12 months until I wrote to every uh, link in the chain right up to the NERC. And then they stopped. And refunded us all monies that we had paid uh, based on the meter reading. Okay? Now we've come back to a situation in a regulated environment where the regulator allows the distribution companies to charge a fixed charge on every meter. Why do they need to supply power if they can make money without supplying anything? Okay. Coming back to if you. If there's a fixed charge, it means that they're taking money without having to supply power at all. Mm. Now, that's defeating the purpose of privatization. And you think that it should be laid at the table of I the think that regulator. nobody should make money without supplying power. It should not happen. Let's bring it why to, why to would you say that every household must, must pay 750 naira and every company that has a trans... Yes, uh, uh, every month. And every and month. And every so company that has... Ways, uh, the so companies say, for are, instance, are making profit. Yes, they're what making I, profit even, without supplying anything. Even giving out darkness. In my case, in, my case in, in, in the case of estate developers, because that's what I do in my day job, okay? Once you have a transformer, your minimum charge is 31,000 naira. Now imagine this, we've not had power in the last seven months, and yet we've paid 31,000 naira every month for the last seven months without supply. Is there any way that this, this kind of policy, because... The only know, way for it to stop is for way. the regulator to wake up to his responsibilities. He yeah. needs to. But the and he is one of the is people sabotaging the efforts of the federal government in this area. You know, so that, that's why... Uh, now so imagine the telephone people, the telephone companies charging you a fixed charge without actually providing, you, you know, airtime for you to talk. Do we assume politicians, maybe the ruling party doesn't know this and then see how they can put a stop well, to this? Well, it's, it's my thought that they're not aware. But how can and that's be? the reason why I'm talking about it now on national television.